Hi, Andrew here. Today we're looking at Underwood's 9mm 124-grain Plus P+. Plus. A viewer sent this ammunition to me a little while ago, and I've been meaning to get around to it. Sorry it's taken so long. But I'm pretty excited to see what this can do. Underwood makes some decent ammo, and they push it crazy fast. And I'm interested to find out if pushing this bullet faster than it normally gets pushed by spear is going to improve or degrade the performance in ballistic gel. Let's get out to the range. Let's fire it out of my Glock Model 22 with a Lone Wolf 9mm conversion barrel into clear ballistics, clear gel. All right, guys, so oftentimes when we drive a pistol bullet too fast, it expands too much and we get inadequate penetration. It doesn't appear that that's the case this time around. Fifteen inches. And <laughs> fifteen inches. Both of them were dead on fifteen inches. You can see, of course, they expanded immediately, obviously. Yes, there's a fair amount of disruption in the gel. Again, as I've said it many, many times before, at pistol velocities, temporary stretch cavity is mostly irrelevant. That the permanent crush cavity, the actual wounding, is determined by the expanded diameter of the recovered projectile. So let's take a look at these bullets. Woo! <laughs> Wow. There we go. Nice full expansion. You can see that these pedals are coming actually past the base of the bullet. So this is expanding beyond what Spear intended this bullet to do, but that's still really good performance. Here's a close-up so you can see what they look like. Absolutely perfect. I'd say that's definitely a go. Let's see how they do against heavy clothing. Okay, We've got one impact here, one impact here. The second lower one came down, hit the table here. The top one came through here, stopped all the way back here. That is 25 and a quarter inches. That is an insane amount of penetration, I think. We may be seeing some artifacts from the clear gel behaving a little differently than real gelatin, but more likely it's just that that's what happens when you push a gold dot really crazy fast and shoot through denim. Uh, we've seen before that firing through heavy clothing can result in reduced expansion or delayed expansion, and that results in deeper penetration. I think that's all we're seeing here. Let me take a look at this bullet. Okay, so yeah, absolutely. We see a smaller diameter than is typical for an expanded gold dot. If 
I get you nice and close to the camera here, and in the light, you can see that these pedals, although they expanded, they didn't come very far down the shank. So the diameter of the bullet is a little bit smaller. We'll get some measurements at home, but my bet here is that the diameter is smaller than we would normally see, which resulted in deeper penetration. All right, so first off, yeah, it's crazy fast. Ridiculously fast for nine by 19 millimeter in 124 grain weight. Maybe a little short of like a 357 SIG, but still moving along ridiculously fast. And that's not necessarily a good thing. Uh, we saw in the heavy clothing test that the expansion was less than you normally see from standard pressure 124 grain gold dot. Gold dot normally does really well against heavy clothing. And it's a bit odd that moving faster did less well against the heavy clothing. I have no idea what kind of mechanism is going on that causes that. If you guys have some sort of insight as to the physics behind that, I'd be fascinated to hear the answer for it. But the bottom line is that pushing it faster got poorer results in heavy clothing. It did kind of sort of okay in bare gel, but it's not hard to do well in bare gel. I guess if this was some other bullet and it was being assessed in independently of spear gold dot, then I'd say, yeah, sure, it's, you know, it's, it's adequate for defense. Um, if it was some budget jacketed hollow point, I'd say this is really good for what it is. But it's not any of those things. This is a spear gold dot that normally does really, really well. The gold dot is pretty near the gold standard in defensive pistol ammunition, along with the HST, there really isn't much out there that does better. And you can buy Spear 50 round LE boxes for about the same price per round as you can get this from Underwood. So I don't wanna crap all over Underwood. They do make good ammunition and they make some ridiculously hot ammunition that really lives up to claims and that's saying something. But I don't believe that it's useful to push this bullet as fast as we're pushing it in this case. I guess that is to say we didn't gain anything by hot rodding this bullet. And if you want all of that extra velocity, then you should do it in a cartridge and a bullet that's designed for that extra velocity, like 357 Magnum. The bullets that we see in 357 Magnum are perfectly capable of handling that extra two or 300 feet per second. Even the bullets from Spear, Spear designs them for those speeds. And of course, lots of other manufacturers as well. If you think I got something wrong, leave a comment below. As I've said many, many times, I love to hear your thoughts on these sort of things. There is a lot of opinion on this one. Um, I am no expert and I'm the first to admit it. So if you think I got something wrong, let me know. And of course, if you'd like to rent a high-speed phantom camera like the one that I used to create this video, Get in touch with Aimed Research. Their contact information is in the description. Have a great day.